Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian. I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns coming up for sale in their April of 2015 premiere auction. One that jumped out at me, they actually have several of these in this upcoming auction, is this Colt House Pistol, uh, sometimes better known as a Cloverleaf and sometimes known as the Jim Fisk model. This was an early, uh, well, it was developed in 1871. It was a rimfire revolver, uh, one of the first developed uh, from the ground up as a rimfire by Colt. It has another, a number of other interesting technical innovations to it. Uh, for one thing, it was the first production Colt to actually be a solid frame instead of an open top design. At any rate, these weren't produced for all that long, but uh, they've got some neat features, so why don't I bring the camera back here and let's take a closer look at them. So when I describe it as a Colt house pistol, that's not a euphemism in any way, that's actually what they called this. The idea was this was actually intended to be used in the house, uh, a pretty literal description. Instead of being intended as, say, a law enforcement revolver or a field revolver um, for the military or for law enforcement or cowboys or anybody else who felt the need to carry a gun uh, during the day, this was intended to be used in the home as a, a home defense piece. It is a four-shot revolver. You can obviously see why they called it a cloverleaf, this heavily recessed uh, four round cylinder, and I mentioned this was a rimfire revolver. One of the things that Colt pioneered with this was the use of a fully recessed uh, cylinder. So you can see the cutout for the rim, and when you put a cartridge in, the cartridge is then flush with the surface of the cylinder, which protects it, protects against accidental discharge if something hits it, that sort of thing. Uh, it also simply strengthens the, the chamber, allows the cartridge to be fully supported which is a nice innovation. That became obviously very common. Now, when this is at full cock, you will see that two of those cylinders are totally exposed. So they have a little shield on this side, which prevents cartridges on this side of the cylinder from ever accidentally falling out. And you've got this little nub right there, which does the same thing on the right side. They couldn't do a shield like this over here because you do still have to have some place where you can load cartridges in. And of course the way that would be done is to put the gun at half cock so that the cylinder rotates freely and then you have a cutout in the frame right here that allows you to load cartridges in that position. So you load up four. Um, the 41 rimfire was a relatively short cartridge with a relatively slow and heavy bullet. Uh, it was about 136 grain bullet for what it's worth. Ejection, once you had fired, was done with this ejector rod which is another kind of cool feature. Uh, unlock it by rotating this open, and then once you pull the rod out, you'll see it has a, uh, a rib here, which prevents you from pulling the rod all the way out, and it's left to rotate rather freely in its, ca in its uh, carry area there. What it allows you to do is, without ever having the risk of losing the ejector rod, you can still punch out cartridges one at a time. When you're done, just put it back into the cylinder access pin there and lock it in place. Another interesting note, when you're actually firing, the hammer hits right down at the very bottom of the cylinder, um, the inboard edge of the cylinder relative to its axis. You can see that there's a little hole right there in between the two cylinders, right there. The idea for that is you can actually drop the hammer into that hole, which lines up the cylinders like this, so that there is not a cartridge under the hammer, which allows it to be safely stowed, uh, fully loaded. Or if you did decide that you wanted to carry this, that gives you a safe carry option. It also actually makes the gun a little bit narrower, which is kind of nice. When Once you have it in firing position, it's a bit wider because the two cylinders are both sticking out the side. In total, about 7,500 of these were made. They did follow this up with a much more conventional five-shot uh, version that had a cylindrical cylinder, uh, much more like what you would expect. They made about 2,500 of those. So all in all, this wasn't a hugely successful gun for Colt. Um, they manufactured them only until about 1875, so just a couple of years of production. They are virtually all brass framed, uh, but they're often plated to kind of hide that fact. This one is, of course, plated, and it's, the plating's actually in really nice shape on this one. 
Most of the time you'll find a brass frame with touches of silver on it where the plating hasn't quite completely rubbed off. So I mentioned that this is sometimes known as the Jim Fisk model. Uh, that comes from the case of the murder of Jim Fisk, who was kind of a larger-than-life robber baron in New York around the time period when these were being made. Um, he had numerous interesting and scandalous exploits uh, and ultimately ended up murdered by a former friend and business partner, partner with a, uh, a Colt Cloverleaf house pistol. That was all over the newspapers at the time, and, and it gave the revolver a bit of notoriety. So I'll include a link to some follow-up information on, on Jim Fisk. He's an interesting guy, interesting to read about. But, well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to add this particular guy or any of the other Colt's Colt Cloverleaf revolvers in this auction to your own personal collection, you have an opportunity to do so coming up in April. So take a look at the link below. That'll take you to Rock Island's catalog page on this particular one. You can take a look at their high-res pictures, their description, and uh, you can also use their catalog to search for the other clover leaves in this auction or anything else that you're looking for. You can create an account online, place a bid, and see if you can end up with this yourself. Thanks for watching.